G'day my friends, Marty, we're here from Marty's Garden. We have an exciting video for you today. We're inside the greenhouse wormery that I've just been building and we have the cube worm farm here where we released a whole lot of cocoons. We're supposed to be equivalent to 1,000 worms. We're going to look inside, see how they're going, check out their sizes, and then we're going to fatten them up. How am I going to do that? Well, watch the video. Well, actually, watch this vlog to find out more, guys. Time to take these baby worms into the wormery, the new greenhouse, as this will be their permanent space for the winter. It's super exciting to do this, and I hope you follow along in this project for me to expand my organic garden, build out the wormery, and become slightly self sufficient in this small space garden that I live in urban Australia. Big reveal, let's open them up and see how they're going. It's been one month on, and I have been checking in on them, so they aren't all dead. They're not doing too bad, actually. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Ah, yes. Lots of little, good little sizes here. You know, nothing too big. Just at the right size that they should be. About sort of like the length of my pinky, I guess you could stretch them out, or a bit further, maybe one of my longer fingers really quite thin haven't reached a clitellum yet so they won't be really be breeding up but there is the odd cocoon in here still now there were some random ones I think that snuck out from other bins and got in here some big ones whether they've dropped a cocoon in here or not I'm not real sure but it's probably some cocoons that never hatch who knows but there are still some cocoons in here that are quite yellow and haven't browned off yet when they start going brown they're actually closer to popping out of their little shells. So I've got some like little bits of food scrap left over. They've chewed through the banana peel. I've got a little bit of carbon in here. So what am I going to feed them up with to get them and fatten them up now that they're nearly close to maturity? I think in another couple of weeks, I'll be getting very close. And then after that, I'll start getting their clotellum. So there's a few different ways you can fatten them up. You can use like uh, a worm chow or something like that. Today I'm choosing a white rice and this old white rice has got a high carb content in it and they really quite like this. I won't overdo it, there's too much here and I'm using some eggshell powder that I've done in the microwave and I'll be adding that for their grit. So they start getting their grit system working, they start eating this bacteria, these good microbes in here and start getting ready to maturity because we want to eventually bring them out of this farm and start building off other farms. It'd be great if we could just build them all off from this one farm. So how much am I going to add? Well, just a tiny little bit guys, not too much. I always say don't overfeed your worms. Now you can see about that small handful will be enough. Maybe a tiny little bit more, maybe just a little handful there and I will put it into the center of the farm and that way they will come to the center and I'll be able to check how many worms there are in here starting to feed on this white white rice and I'll cover it over with a little bit of the wet newspaper So it's hard to know exactly the number of worms in here without me digging it all up, throwing it into another tray and sort of going through and then taking another approximate guess. So I would say 500 plus and there's still some cocoons to hatch. They say up to six weeks for all the cocoons to hatch, right? So if they're going to go, they'll be hatching in the next two weeks plus. Now I said I was going to check on this farm in six weeks, but it was doing so well. I wanted to show you where I was up to so you can learn how to feed your baby wisps onwards and upwards. Now I've put the rice into the system here and that's in the center. Just a very small handful. Now I've got some eggshell here. There's seven eggs all done in the microwave for a minute and a half. And what I do is I'm just going to sprinkle it all around like a buffer now. Just all through this. And as I turn over this material, over time, it'll get mixed through and take time. Now, eggshell takes a lot longer of a time 
for it to break down, you'd be thinking, ah, oh, Marty, it's just not happening. It's just, you know, they're not eating it. It's not the same as the other foods, right? The bacteria doesn't connect to it as the same and all that type of thing. So it's more of a buffer and gizzard thing and it helps, you know, with the pH balance and stop it from going over acidic. It just takes time and it gets mixed through. So I'm not too bothered about that. That'll be the right amount for a very, very long time. Now, the other super secret trick is this thing, right, right? Where I fed in the centre, now, this farm, now this isn't leachate, this is the water that I poured through the farm, if you see in my courses where I create the worm, create the worm tea, this is more of a drench, right? And so, pour this over the whole farm, but mostly in the centre, where the food area is, because I want them to drive them into that spot. Uh, where the most of the moisture is and this has got a lot of already good bacteria in it already it's oxygenated it's very fresh not sour in any way and yeah it'll sort of set that area off they'll move in there to feed on that rice start fattening up and I'll give them a bit more rice when I see how much they eat uh, I just find I've got rice lying around all the time I don't have to go out and buy anything else to make a worm chow or anything like that and it does super awesome that way. I'll show you one more tip just before we go. So I'm yet to add a piece of sort of cardboard newspaper on top of here. I'm going to get some eggshell cartons and put them on next. I really like those. But I actually have this piece of cloth. It's an old piece of shade cloth. And this works an absolute treat. It puts the oxygen through. They just don't climb through it so much. And it doesn't break down, but I don't care about that. It just creates a nice, dark, aerated position, and I really love it. So the wormery inside the greenhouse, it's sort of an experiment. I had a wormery once before inside the garage called the Worm Cave, but this is gonna be much better. It's gonna be easier to keep clean. I'm gonna really be able to grow a lot of plants in there, because for me, it's all about organic gardening, getting that carbon locked down in the soil, feeding the microbes, getting that soil just living like no tomorrow, turning this big pile over here that I've made over the last six months into a nice big edible garden around the side and start living the dream, guys. It's all about recycling, using my waste to turn into something wonderful and saving a lot of money along the way. And oh, how good the food is that? So if you're digging that and you want to see more, videos like that with the worm farming, the gardening, organic gardening. Stay subbed guys and I'll see you at the next video real soon. Bye for now.